as I said before, this bike has a very, very unique sound. It's a cross plane, and it has a very unique sound. Oh, I have a little bit of time today. This is a project that I've been putting off for quite a while. I've been waiting for a day that today is a, it just happens to be today that I'd have a very short amount of time, a couple hours, and I really can't go for a ride. It's not enough time. But I had one maintenance thing I wanted to do on the R1. Now, over the last six months, I've been changing it from being a Ferrari bike. I changed the color of the wheels. Yeah, we, we moved things around, changed the handlebars, changed the mirrors. But the last thing on this, and this is the part of it that I wanted to share, the one thing I wanted to do, and it's just for entertainment value, it serves no performance purpose or it just turns it into a little bit different bike. I wanted to replace the exhaust system. I have the one on there that I made. I want to replace it with the stock exhaust. It makes the bike run a little different. It sounds a little different. So for, for some amount of time, it'll be a different bike to me. And that's, that's the whole purpose of Evil Twins is you don't have to buy another bike to, to have the illusion that you have another bike. Now, I've done it with the RD, and it worked well. I feel like I have a new RD, a different RD. And now I understand, not everybody is like this. Some people like to buy a bike and leave it exactly stock. Every washer, every, every cotter pin has to be stock. Some people like a total custom bike where you can't even tell where the engine came from. And, but there's room for everybody. Everybody has something unique that they like. Their involvement with motorcycling is different. One of the things I enjoy doing is taking, like my GS, and making an evil twin out of it and having it a West Cooley bike one year and having gold wheels, and this winter we'll have black wheels, and I like to have multiple, multiple things that I can do to the bike, and it's just for my own entertainment value. Now, re I thought I'd make a short video, replacing the exhaust, relatively straightforward job. I need to do some polishing and cleaning. Because the stock exhaust, what happened when I bought the bike, I don't think it was a, two months later I made these mufflers. And I wound up getting from the service manager at Motorcycle Mall, Ron, I bought his whole exhaust system, which, uh, which I used parts of to make this exhaust system. So to, to change it out now, I suspect I'll, a couple hours from now, I'll have it changed out. And a little bit of polishing, it'll look better than no. Now, if you go way back in the channel, I did make a video, uh, oh my God, this was about seven or eight years ago, that of making the exhaust system, and that's still out on my channel somewhere. And these mufflers, now, uh, the resin on them, it's Huntsman resin that I got from Dave Midgley and Dick Hewitt. That resin has held up so well over the years, I'm amazed. I did quite a bit of polishing on the pipes. In fact, maybe what I'm gonna do, since I have some spare time, do the equivalent amount of polishing on that but this is just going to do a couple of things the that i noticed when i put these exhausts and by the way this bike does have the catalytic converter it doesn't have a straight through mid pipe so what happens i didn't need to put a chip in it or a power commander or anything and this just let it i think i don't even think it added much horsepower if any but it made this sound very different now with these mufflers it's going to be the equivalent of having a new bike just like when I change the mufflers on the RD, for, now for a year, for two years, for six months, I'll have a different bike. I'm sure I'll get sick of them at some point in time. Put the tuned exhaust back on. This bike, I've had three different mufflers on, including a Norton muffler. And the FZR, we had the original Yoshimura muffler. And the final thing, the final thing that I haven't even made a decision on yet if I want to do it. I wanted to make a totally custom carbon fiber muffler for this bike as part of the restoration that's still on hold because I don't really know how I want to do it. And I've heard a couple of these bikes that have various aftermarket mufflers and I didn't like the sound of any of them. So I'm probably going to have to make my own. Now just to get the history of this bike, I bought this new in 09. It was one of the first R1s that came in. And I got it from Motorcycle Mall. And when I rode it, the day I brought it home, it was snowing. I brought it into, it's a true story, I brought this into the garage, put it right where it is now, right where it is now, put the kickstand down, never realized I didn't have it down all the way, and this brand new bike, what had three miles on it, fell on its side, didn't damage anything, didn't hurt anything, because I have the rugs on the garage, but that, that is a true story, that's kind of stuff you can't make up. 
And part of the Evil Twin project, I've made all these little carbon fiber parts. That's some carbon fiber bracketry I made. And when I had the other set of handlebars on, I had a little carbon fiber brackets that held things. But it was, this was just one of my things. It's kind of like a hobby to make these little parts. Now making a muffler was pretty labor intensive. It seemed to work out good. And what amazed me the most is this has been on the bike. Probably not eight, nine years. I don't know exactly. I'd have to look at the pictures for the date. Got to go back over to the video. But that what, what amazed me is how well that resin held up. But this will just be fun. This will give me the chance to ride what I, what I think will be a bike that's a little bit unique and different to me. And at some point in time, I'll put these in storage, put a coat of uh, wax on them, put them down a the cellar in storage like I have the spare exhaust system. For the other GS. So having these spare parts and having them in storage, it allows me on a day like today to change the whole feel of the bike in a matter of a couple hours. And I call that, it's my own little saying, I call that evil twins. Well, one of the things I always get a kick at if I always do this when you meet somebody new to you, you have never met before and you take the seat off and you say, okay, here you go. Yamaha part or windy part? Ah, looks like a real Yamaha part to me. <laughs> it's, it's really plywood. It's actually a piece of wood that, that I put a finish on on a fiberglass, and this is Nomex. It's a Nomex base. It's all aircraft material. And then I put that finish on, so when it comes to unique parts, I never have to worry I'm going to ride over to Motorcycle Mall and three other 18-year-old kids are going to have that exact part. That's just one of the unique things about this, which is to me a very unique motorcycle. Now this is an idea. When I bought this bike and I bought it brand new, I made the deal. I made the exact deal I wanted. I actually got about $1,000 off the list price because I had bought other stuff there, other bikes. And here's, this was very cool. I said at the very last minute, I said, look, one thing to close the deal, you got to throw in the factory service manual. Now this is not the thing you buy online. This is a, a really intense, thing and I've used it every time when I had to put the starter motor in here actually the only real big thing that's ever been bad on this bike was the starter motor and other than that it's been a bulletproof motorcycle and we've got just under 30,000 miles on it and it's it's been a good motorcycle and I've had a lot of fun making these custom parts now why I like to have the factory manual there are some tricky things to get in the tail section off and there are electronics and everything in there I don't want to disturb any of that that I don't have to but having this having a factory manual oh so handy so handy now if I remember right the last time I had the exhaust off I could get in there with a wrench but it was really difficult without taking anything off the back that bolt is very difficult to get to but but certainly not impossible so we're gonna see if we can do that and the first thing then is there's bolts on each side of the exhaust, bolts there, and bolts here, and once they're all off, we should be able to pull the old exhaust system right off. And because it's really hot in here, we got both fans going today. Boy, all winter when I'm out here freezing with a quartz heater, I can't imagine how warm it gets. This garage on a hot day, you could cook. So once I get this clamp off and get that loosened, there's a little piece of rubber under the clamp, and I had to make all these brackets. It was quite a job, and this, this will just be a wiggle to get this off. We'll have this off, and let me tell you, that is that is about 12, I think I remember, it's 12 pounds lighter than this, the one that comes with the bike. But right now, that's not the purpose. The purpose is we want to have an evil twin. So with the one off, I've got to remove this piece now to get the wrench in there. It's going to be, well, it's it's got to be done there's a bolt that holds it and a couple of tabs and tangs but that has to come off otherwise I can't these bolts on the stock mufflers go in through the top and I know there's going to be an interference with the signals I may have to lower this or move it or something well we'll cross that bridge when we come to it because obviously when I had the, the original I had the original signals these are not these are from a Kawasaki I believe and it's a long story to why I have them on there I'm not going to tell it right now but it is a true story now I do remember this, Every everything in this tail section is, there's fuses and electronic wiring and things I don't want to disturb if I don't have to, so, but I do remember now, now my memory is great. I got to remove the two press pins that are in here, there's two little ones up I believe, yeah two, 
and then this will slide off. Okay, now the little Zeus fittings are in here. Once they're out, that, pe that part should slide right off now. And this will just make it a little easier if I take the seat off. I don't want to force this back. It's loose already, but I don't want to force it. And there's all little tabs along this. If you break the tabs, ah, I don't want to do that. My problem, I totally forgot about the two, the two uh, little Zeus fittings that are under the, uh, uh, under the seat. Now, I want to be real careful not to, not to damage this when I take this off. Actually, I don't have to take it off. I just need to raise it up to get this bolt out. And there, the bolt is out. So the key thing now is these are these are kind of rubber mounted, so you definitely don't want to change that in any way. I have to get the exhaust bolts, and I know I saved them because the muffler is going to hook right on there, solidly, and then it's very it's nice and rubber mounted. And then I just have to check what I'm going to do about the clearance on these, or I'm going to have to replace them. But since we're not riding today, it won't matter. Now this is another funny R1 story. When I first bought the bike, because it was the first of this series of bikes, the 09s, at, these parts were not available, so I took the metal parts and just laminated them with the high temperature resin that I used to make the other muffler and buffed them out. And I see here we are nine years later, eight years later, whatever it is, they, within a minute, they're back to being beautifully finished. Oh, I always say, all the time you spend buffing something, it's... Just one little wipe with a, a little bit of polish and it's right back to being brand new. Okay, now I have the clamp that's from the other exhaust. And I want to see if this is going to be... I'm still going to have an interference fit there. This bolt has to come out. Not over in there. Now I know this is going to be an interference fit, that's a problem. We'll find out right away. Right away. Yeah, I think I'll be able to just lower that a little bit. That's what I guess we're going to find out. The clamp is in there. What I want to do is I want to dry fit everything and leave it loose and then tighten it all up, all, all at one time. That resin, that resin really pop. That's Huntsman resin. That really high temperature resin. You, you would have to have it to be on a ply to mufflers, but that's when we're all done, I'll give that a, a little bit more polishing and we should be good to go. Okay, one down, one to go. Now, again, because these are, we've already done the other side, this will be pretty cut and dry. It's pretty much the same thing. And once we get those parts on there, then it's going to be a question of buttoning everything back up and seeing if we can come up with something here to. I don't know, maybe to lower that or have to figure it out. We'll, we'll definitely figure it out. See, the issue is my exhaust is smaller in diameter and I made this piece. So in the worst of all worlds, I'll shim that piece down or I can get smaller blinkers. Now I don't know, yeah, I don't know how much smaller, probably I could make a little spacer and just lower that whole license plate thing down and that would solve the problem. We'll see. But the next thing is though, repeat the same process and get the other side on. This is just a personal thing. It aggravates me no end. And I know an average person, a person with more mental stability, wouldn't, this wouldn't bother them. But every time I added a bike to my collection, I would have to go down the motor vehicles, sit there, go through this big long thing, get a title, get a thing, get this, get registration, get a plate, come home, call the insurance company. Now, when you do evil twins, and you can be happy with what you're doing. Well, what's nice about it is there's no re-registration. And in the case of the, the historic, this bike is not historic, but the historic bikes, the nice thing is this, they're forever. So what, what I'm saying is this is, there's no frustration to this. Uh, I'll have this done in an hour or so, and I have what amount, what'll entertain me as a relatively different or new motorcycle with a different sound and a different feel to the throttle or what? Who the hell knows what? But it works for me. May not work for you. I know when Joe Roselli put the exhaust on his MV Agusta and I took the pictures of him going by, I said, oh my God, changed the whole bike. It went from being one thing to being 
like a MotoGP bike. It was unbelievable. And same thing with some of the things Luciano's done. It, an exhaust system can change the whole feel of the motorcycle, the sound, and depending on what you want. If you want something really loud, I see 18-year-old kids over at, at Rutz Hut going up and down Route 21. No muffler. They just have a, flames coming out the back. But anyway, this is a significant thing because this bike has a unique sound even with the stock exhaust system. hiding all these bolts of course because it's difficult to get get in at this I don't want to have to tighten this up after some amount of time so it looks like the best solution is just to get some longer bolts and make a spacer for in here maybe I could just use washers even doesn't have to be too fancy but I do want to have I, this of course I do want to have this nice and solid so I'll take my time, I'll get some spacers for that and some longer bolts. And that's a part that I made, so, but of course what I made it after I changed the, uh, the mufflers. Now I need three longer bolts and this is why I always suggest to people anytime you take anything apart, never, never throw the bolts away. Now luckily I have plenty of spacers that I've already made and I hope I have enough of them. And I was making these for handlebar risers at one time, so I have plenty of them. It's just a question of finding out which ones are going to work. Because what i got to do is space them down just enough that they don't touch the muffler. I have a feeling even if they touch the muffler, this is a vented part. It doesn't really get hot. It's not really attached to the muffler as such. It's the part that's really getting hot. In fact, there is air around there just for that, probably for that reason that these don't get super hot. But anyway, I don't, I don't want to have that. I'd like to have it and have some clearance. So this is pretty cool. By the time I get done adjusting this spacer, I have just enough clearance on both sides. That absolutely worked out perfectly. <laughs> for, for once in my life, I catch a break. So what's left is to line up this part, get all the tabs in place. Easier said than done we will get them and all these little Zeus fittings that hold this in place we've got to just line this up once all these screws are on put the seat on I think we're pretty much buttoning this up whatever time I have left over I'll do a little cleanup on the motorcycle get it ready for our next ride now I always remember this last of these little Zeus fittings what a nuisance to get this one in you just can't get your hands up in there. But what I remember doing, let's see if it still works. Take the uh, forceps, dock the forceps, hold it on the end of the forceps. Let's we'll see if that works. A little trusty Harbor Freight light. Ho oh, oh, ho! It is our lucky day. Gotta buy a lottery ticket. Push the little pin in, and we're buttoned. Wow, it is our lucky day. Who the fuck? True thing, and this is a this is a really good story. Like all of these stories anyway. The when I first got this bike, I was I was hoping, yeah, this is gonna be fun, I'm gonna customize it, I'm gonna like everybody that buys a sports bike, make it personal. And I made a whole bunch of seats that were thicker and thinner and higher and lower and and whatever. And Every time I did, I found something I liked about it and something I didn't like about it. And that's really the case with all of these modifications. There's, there's definitely certain things that when you make a change, you get that, but you give this up. And so my modifications are absolutely ongoing. And I'm never satisfied, and I never will be. I'm, and I do enjoy the fact that I can make these evil twin adjustments. And for all purposes, tomorrow, next day, I will have a new bike I have, haven't have ridden. Time for one really very funny story that uh, it's not so funny to me. There was a time and I had all these changes done to the bike and I was making parts and making things and changing things. And I decided I was going to put these little baby blinkers on here. And, oh man, they're going to look cool. I'm going to look like an 18-year-old kid. Wow. 
Well, you know what? I had them on for a while, and then we went for a real sport bike ride with Luciano. We were really flying, and I was in the lead, and I wanted to make a little turn. Everybody knows where this turn is, in where the church is, and it would be a left turn. I put the blinker on for the left turn. Luciano didn't see the blinker and went by me at 120 miles an hour and just about kissed handlebars, and I thought, oh my God. And when I asked him about it, I said, what's going on? He said, I didn't see the blinker. And then I walked back 10 feet, and you know what? I didn't see the blinker either. So, and I just hollered at him about that monster. He's got those little baby blinkers. They look like pencil erasers. But anyway, that's a true story, and that may be something that'll save your life. So I thought before I end this video, I'd make a, a little walk around of the parts that I had done, I had made. Of course, painting the wheels, a major thing. Making these little carbon fiber heel guards, major thing. Replacing the backmaster cylinder with a smaller one. I had polished that part up. That part was not polished when you buy the bike. I did several things. I had painted these blue at one time. Didn't like it. Painted them black. And that's the nice thing about all paint. Painted the gills blue. Didn't like it. I had Ferrari stickers on it for four or five years. Having a lot of fun with the Ferrari thing when we had the other Ferrari. Recently, I guess not too long ago, put the, the stock ones back on. But that's the beauty. That's the whole beauty, in my case, of enjoying an evil twin. Now, the other part of it is I had to make these from scratch. Not available anywhere. Because at one point in time, Josh Hayes was one of the dominant riders and his factory bike looked like that i thought you know it looks pretty cool everybody will think i'm josh hayes hey i'm tall like him anyway <laughs> my riding skills are not really where his are anyway luciano got me a set of these gold levers i have a set of silver levers i had done a, at least five different sets of mirrors over the years things that all detail things to make the bike fit me now i had made these parts laminated them Every single part of it, though, and as I'm doing a walk around, every part of it is to make the bike personal to you. So you just jump on a bike and eh, the seats, eh, the pegs are too high, eh, the bars are too wide. No, it takes years to get the bike to where it's your bike. Now, in this case, to get to where this bike is now, it took me 11 years. But the last time I rode it, I knew it was my motorcycle. And as I said before, this bike has a very, very unique sound. It's a cross plane, and it has a very unique sound. Even with the stock mufflers, or with my mufflers, or any of them, a really nice sound. So I wanted to make sure I thank the COVID workers, all the healthcare workers that make all our, all our lives possible. They really have done an incredible job. I am thankful every day when Karen and I look at our, the age we are. We're both in our mid-70s, and we're having a relatively good life. And I hope it goes on until I'm really old, maybe even older than you. Well, anyway, beside the point. Here's the real point. Whatever part of motorcycling you enjoy, and this is such a critical thing, if you like trials bikes, dirt bikes, Harleys, you like uh, drag bikes, uh, there's one problem. I like them all. I'm stuck with this. I wish I had another life and another body and another... I wish I was young again so I could start building up certain things that I really like. I wish I could go back to track days. That's one of the few things I read. When I bought this bike and it was new, I didn't want to scratch it and gouge it all up and take it to track day and everything. And, and I really, now that I'm too old to go to track day, I really think, wow, I missed, I should have taken it at least once. And just, just so I could say I took it to a track day. But that's for my next lifetime. When I come back to life as, uh, I don't know, <laughs> Bobby the Baker or something anyway. I hope you've enjoyed these videos, all of the videos I make, the ride videos, the work videos, the paint videos. They are fun to make. It's fun to share it. I hope you enjoy it. Watch it while, you, uh, while you're while you young enough to enjoy this. And if you got one of these R1s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That cross-plane motor is something special. I, I, Anytime I ride it with any muffler or anything, it doesn't matter. That is a special motor. Anyway, thanks for watching.